Operation Domination is underway. The ultimate game plan to dominate your NFL experience. With your hosts, Dan you gotta be You gotta be confident about your Achilles. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got an Achilles. Chris and Adam LaRue. Don't hope to win. Be great and dominant. Well, a little delayed, but we are live here on our Facebook Fantasy Advice Network on social media, on Twitter, and on Facebook. We'll think the good thing about not doing this live on YouTube is that it's going to go published on Friday morning like it normally would be. And it's going to be available on your favorite podcast app, just like Operation Domination always is. I'm your host, Dan Mater. We got the injury inquiry episode here on a Thursday night to talk about to get us the edge we need going into the weekend. But in order to do that, we got to introduce our guests. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. He's the number one medical expert in all of fantasy sports. The one, the only, Dr. Brian Scott! <laughs> there, I, like I had that. to throw that in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it goes out perfectly. It does. It does. Oh, like okay. The icing on the cake. Yeah. So, Brian, it was a... A rough week for fantasy because this felt like all the superstars were the ones who got hurt here. And this this list has yeah, got ones more. that were left standing, at least. <laughs> I mean, there's been so many guys out all year. This list got dirty long. So we're going to have a lot for you to talk about, a lot for me to piggyback yeah. off of that with the fantasy football analysis. So let's just dive right into it. Oh, 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 oh. The first one, at least, not super severe. Uh, Jane Daniels dealing with a ribs issue. They don't seem to be concerned long term. But what do you think of what, about this week? Man, that's going to be tough. Uh, ribs hurt, uh, whether they fracture or not. And by all reports, it sounds like he did not fracture any of them. However, uh, it's a painful injury. Even a bad sprain to the rib cartilage can be very painful. And that could take at least a couple of weeks before you're really feeling better. I I'm... I'm leaning more toward at least a week or two before we see him back in game action. We'll probably see him start doing some stuff on the practice field and test it out next week, but I think it's going to be at least a week or two. Yeah, I mean, the reports I was seeing that he might test it out on Friday. Okay, again, we're doing the show Thursday night, so he might test it out on Friday. We'll see what it looks like, but that it's trending in a direction of he misses this week because they have the Giants next week and they want to make sure they're taking care of the division. I could see that being the case. Yeah, it that, hurts. That, that's very reasonable. That's very, very feasible. Yeah, and it, it hurts, though, because Jaden Daniels was a top three quarterback for fantasy football purposes. Now, Marcus Mariota had a good showing. Guys, it was the Carolina Panthers. Let's just not get overly <laughs> excited about what we saw out of Marcus Mariota. A much tougher match because the Chicago yeah. Bears. Now, I have not yet reflected in my rankings of Jaden Daniels missing, so I have not moved Mariota where he would be if you go to Fantasy Football Advice Network and look for tools and see Dan Mater's rankings. But... I would can tell you at the top of my head that he's going to probably move somewhere in my top 18, between 16 and 18. There's nobody on by this week. So I don't think Marcus Mariota is going to be a stream against the Chicago Bears for me. All right. So what, what does that do to Terry McLaurin? Well, I'm not too concerned. This, this was going to be a tough matchup anyway. But McLaurin's been too good, I think, to bench in your lineups. Marcus Mariota did a decent job of at least targeting him throughout that game. If they fall behind, there will be more of that. So... I think McLaurin at the end of the day is still probably a low end wide receiver too. So this one was kind of unfortunate. Andy Dalton in a car accident hurt his thumb as a result of this. They've already announced it's going to be Bryce Young. How long of an injury do you think Andy Dalton's going to have here? <clears throat> well, apparently it was a minor fender bender, but then at the same time, the airbags deployed, which means you have to be going at least a certain speed and have at least a certain amount of force to cause that to happen. Uh, he was holding onto the steering wheel. It sounds like he sprained a thumb um, while picking up his kids from school, unfortunately. Uh, so it's going to be at least a week, if not maybe two or three. Uh, I mean, it depends on the severity here. They're saying mild, but the airbags deploying would suggest otherwise. It's not a fracture. It's just a sprain. So theoretically, he probably could play with that thing taped up 
Um, but they'll probably just give him at least this week to to rest it and see how he feels next week. Yeah, glad everybody was okay because when car accidents happen, it's always it's always a little bit scary. Um, as far as the fantasy side of this goes, Bryce Young comes back. Run! Run for the hills. Don't play any wide receivers at all. Deontay Johnson, whether he plays or not, he might just physically try to shut himself down anyway. I don't know. But he, he's out there. You got Pastor Tan back uh, on an elite Denver Bronco defense. And Bryce Young was making every single defense the number one scoring defense of the week when he was starting. Yeah, run for the hills when it comes to anybody not named Chuba Hubbard, quite frankly. And even then, I'm a little bit scared, but at least he was putting up numbers even when Brian when Bryce Young was out there. I, my friend, my co-host, Adam LaRue, said it best. And you guys could check us out. We're live 9.30 on Wednesday nights. We do go live on YouTube for, for the preview every single week. Uh, he said it best. He's like, I think people need a refresher on how bad Bryce Young is. Because there's been all this talk about like, well, at this point, they're just going to lose games. They should just go back to Bryce Young. No, they shouldn't. Because it's not NFL football when Bryce Young plays. So if you all need a refresher to remember that, then that's what we're about to get this week with the Denver Broncos. A nice little refresher. Okay, so (laughs) shout out to Tyler Bradley there joining the chat on Facebook. Make sure you guys do the same. Moving into Derek Carr. So they didn't put him on IR. The thought was, I guess, that he'd be back within four games. Are we any closer, you think? It might not be this week. I don't think it's going to be. But do you think maybe next week? I think next week is a real possibility. Uh, he had a couple of throwing sessions uh, this week. And it sounds like, uh, by all reports, things went fairly well. And he didn't have any setbacks. Um, it, I think, you know, he's a veteran. He's been in the league a long time. He's not going to push it. Uh, knowing that the potential to re-injure uh, is very easy with the oblique injuries. And so he'll he'll take it slow, um, but he's working his way back. We should see him ramp up his activity next week. I definitely don't think he's playing this week, um, but next week is a real possibility. Yeah, I mean, I left Chris Olave off the list because he did practice, so we expect him to be back from, from concussion protocol, which is, which is great news. I'm not playing. Chris Olave. I have him ranked at wide receiver 43 with Spencer Rattler against a really good Chargers defense right now. Not going to play him this week. But next week in Germany, when the Saints take on the Carolina Panthers and Derek Carr is back, yeah, we'll fire him up. So that's all I really care about. I think you got to go one more week if you have better options to kind of stick without Chris Olave, and then he'll be back in your lineup after that. And the other good news, we don't really talk about offensive linemen, but Cesar Ruiz might be a week or two away. McCoy is going to be coming back. So things might start to look up for the Saints in the second half of the season. So if you had Olave, if you have Alvin Kamara, while everyone else might be telling you to sell, I say hold for the second half of your playoff push, actually. Okay, so with that, that wraps up. Oh, I'm sorry. We did add Aiden O'Connell in here. I guess we have to mention him. Go ahead. I just threw him on there because he had a thumb fracture, and he's going on IR. So not that maybe it makes a big impact with fantasy, uh, but that could cause some shuffling around. Uh, in their lineup and um, potentially at the quarterback position for that. Yeah, you you know what happens? Gardner Minshew takes over, and uh, what's the difference in production? Oh, absolutely nothing. (laughs) It's the same player. All right, so with the running backs, Jonathan Taylor, ankle, it's sounding like it's going to be a lot like Christmas. Jonathan Taylor sounded like he might be coming back. I think he got full participation today. Well, if that's the case, then, yeah, we could see him this week because prior to our little segment here, uh, he had only limited practices and wasn't really committed to telling the media that he's ready just yet. So it was sounding like it might be another week. Um, now, if he had a full practice today, could get another one in tomorrow and feels up to it, then we definitely could see him uh, Sunday. All right, so Jonathan Taylor might be back in your lineups. He's in my top 10 for the week. This one's been maddening. Travis Etienne dealing with the hamstring. He's never missed a practice. He was limited the whole time. He's still been limited. Uh, but that's the problem, Dan. If you remember with hamstrings, I always say until he gets a full session in, anyone with a hamstring injury for, for that matter, until they get a full practice session in, you really don't know what you're dealing with as far as the recovery goes. So um, part of the reports or some of the reports I saw today also had him doing some work on the side with the training staff either during or after practice. So that's a little concerning because that means that he's still working very closely with input from the medical team, which tells me that he's still experiencing some symptoms. Um, So I would pump the brakes a little bit here on him coming back this week. Um, You know, it sounds like it might be at least another week. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see. So here's what I have right now. Right now I have 
the backfield ranked as if Travis Etienne is going to play because trying to figure out Doug Peterson's uh, a headache and a half as, as it is. Keeps trying to say Travis Etienne's this guy, even though Tank Bixby has been like the second best rusher to Derrick Henry on a per carry basis this year. But, you know, I digress. What we did see is that they're not going to put Tank Bixby in passing situations. That's why DRS Johnson had the big playing time that he did. So what does that mean? Well, if Travis Etienne does go this week, let's just say for argument's sake, he does against the Green Bay Packers. That is likely a negative game script for the Jacksonville Jaguars who can't stop anybody on defense. So I actually have Travis Etienne a few spots ranked ahead of Tank Bigsby because, well, he might play more because he gets the pass catching work when he is the running back in the backfield. So we'll see if he's able to go. I don't think he's far away based on what we've seen. If he does miss this week, he might be back next week. But keep that in mind. It's going to be game script dependent as far as what Jacksonville running back is going to get more touches. I, I don't even want to say more owned or who plays because ETN has been so bad, but more touches. All right, so let's look at Tajay Spears here. He looked, he sounded like he might be coming back. Well, uh, I don't know what he did today, but he was limited in practice yesterday, and that was his first real practice since he had a few no practices last week leading up to his absence. So this is going to be a week-to-week thing. I do not think we see him this weekend. As of yet, um, you know, if he can get a couple more limited limited practice sessions in before the end of this week and then start off next week with some more and maybe work his way back to full, then that's encouraging. But uh, from what I've seen so far, it's not encouraging for this week, at least. So he was limited again today. Um, maybe it's Brian Callahan trying to be overly positive. I don't know. He's he's saying, it's like, I expect Tajay Spears back, or he's just hoping because he knows with Mason Rudolph, he needs Pollard and Spears to run the ball because that's going to be his only offense that he's going to be able to conjure. Uh, <laughs> how pathetic Tennessee is shipping off DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley himself being out, and it's just it's not a good fantasy situation outside of Tony Pollard. Maybe Tajay Spears as a low-end flex play if he, in fact, can go with the work that he was getting, but we'll see if he can go. So Alvin Kamara, he talked about how he's been playing with a broken hand and he hasn't missed any games as a result of this, but this was news to us. Yeah. Well, I've read some reports that said it's not just a broken hand. It's actually a broken rib uh, or ribs as well, um, which is quite shocking. Um, And he was uh, quoted as saying like, Hey, listen, everybody plays hurt in this league all the time, basically. Um, But, you know, historically speaking, uh, Kamara has not missed much time due to injury, except for within the last couple of years here as his career has gotten well into it. Um, So it sounds like he's just going to keep playing through this and it hasn't really affected him too much. Although if you do look at the stats and the production, it has fallen off since week five when they're claiming these injuries occurred. So obviously it is affecting him to some degree and he's not playing at 100% as he admittedly said. So something to keep an eye on going forward. Uh, you know, he might try and stretch this out to their bye week if they haven't had it yet. I don't know what their schedule is, but that could be a possibility. Although, you know, the further you get into the season and trying to play through injuries, sometimes the worse it gets. And that one week off might not be enough to help him recover enough to be 100% the rest of the way. So we'll have to see. He's a tough dude. This is not the first time that we've seen Alva Kamara press through and play through games through painful injuries in the past. And look, it was looking real bleak last Sunday. Like, I thought maybe Kamar really is on the training block. Maybe he does win out. And then they signed him to an extension. So this might be like, oh, I just got paid. I can suck it up a little bit to give you guys something Amen. in the backfield, partly. So, yeah. Hey, look, if you have him in your lineup, uh, am I crazy about his upside this week? No. I mean, the charge has been very good against running backs. Spencer, Spencer Rattler's back there. I think they're barely going to be running an NFL offense. But I don't know who you have better at running back right now than Alvin Kamara, quite frankly. So he might be hard to get out of your lineups. He is a low-end RB2 for me. If you have a better matchup, maybe think about it. The ceiling won't be there, but the floor still would. All right, so now we get the move to Bucky Irving, who apparently picked up a toe injury. This is not something I saw during the game, and I was watching that game pretty intently. We saw the Godwin of it all, which we'll talk about in a minute. But he hasn't practiced the last two days now, so now we're, we're now a little bit worried, right? Uh, you might have threw it, either you threw this one on late or I just skipped right over it. I apologize. But yeah, um, anytime you hear of a toe injury and a do not practice, uh, you're you're worried about that dreaded turf toe injury, which can be quite significant, especially at the running back position where you're having to pivot, cut, change directions on a dime here. 
So uh, that is a little concerning. Maybe they're just being precautious as well. But typically with a toe injury, if it's significant and if it's a turf toe related injury, um, these are not good. And these will require uh, strict uh, rest, uh, monitoring, possibly more advanced imaging like MRI studies if they think that's what it is and potentially a lot of time lost to game action. So it's something to keep an eye on for sure as we head into this weekend. Yeah, so it's it's tough because Bucky Irving's been he's been cutting into the work. He's been actually a, a viable running back to have in your flex, and now he might not even be an option. And Tampa Bay losing its two receivers, looking like it's going to have to lean more on that running game, was already kind of turning into a three headed monster to some degree. Now Sean Tucker had gone back to the RB three role, although he got a few extra snaps than he was earlier in the in the year when all three running backs were healthy. So if Bucky misses, this is probably going to be the Rashad White and Sean Tucker show, and it's probably going to be Thunder and Lightning. They're going to use Rashad White in the passing down situation, Sean Tucker probably more short yardage, first and second down type of deal. They did give Rashad White most of the work on Monday night, but they had a negative game script most of that night too. So I don't know how much more to read into it from that standpoint. So keep that in mind. Uh, But, yeah, so Sean Tucker, maybe he moves up. Rashad White holds on to his job. Rashad White, RB3. Sean Tucker still a dire flex play. Uh, Not loving it for this week when they don't have many wide receivers. Speaking of wide receivers, let's start off with the Brian Ayuk of it all because we're not going to talk about him again this year. This is somebody we're going to be talking about in the next year. This was nasty, right? Torn ACL, torn MCL. I mean, what's the prognosis for next year in your opinion? Well, due to the timing of it, we're looking at, you know, definitely probably missing some of that uh, preseason at the very least, if not the first few weeks as well. Um, you know, uh, to have the ACL MCL combination is not unusual. In fact, it usually also involves a third structure, usually some form of a meniscal tear. So um, they'll know that once they go in there to fix the ACL and everything. Um, They might even know that already, but just haven't disclosed it. So that could potentially prolong his rehab a little bit if they do find a meniscal tear that needs to be addressed uh, during this reconstructive surgery. So um, what, you know, basically what this does is really put his uh, recovery time in in somewhat of a cloud because we won't know if he's going to be kind of right at that nine to 10 mark, uh, 10 month mark, or if he might be a little bit longer, more closer, closer to a year or so. Um, but you know, Dan, no one, no one wanted to listen to me. Uh, I had Brandon Ayuk on my pre-draft uh, injury special the year he came out of college. He was on that list for a reason. He missed time in college with various injuries throughout his collegiate career. That's always kind of a red flag heading into the draft. Uh, he's dealt with injuries throughout his NFL career as well. Uh, somehow was able to garner a very large, lucrative contract, and then within a few weeks of that happening. Uh, well, I, I will say this. Yes, he's been banged up from here, but he's only missed a couple of games here and there throughout his career. He really hasn't missed much time since becoming an NFL player. Until, Until now. <laughs> Until now. Uh, yeah. All right. So <laughs> that was that wasn't the only season ending one. We also we all, right. well, actually let's let's stick with the same team real fast because we'll just talk about yeah, Debo yeah. Samuel with, with pneumonia. So uh, do you think he's got any chance of actually playing this week? Well, well, apparently he was uh, let, let out of the hospital and uh, their head coach said that he looks great and he was feeling pretty good, um, which sounds pretty amazing. Uh, if it was it's truly pneumonia, uh, usually the recovery from that is not very quick and that can really take a serious toll on you physically uh, when the lungs are infected because of that. So, um, you know, I'm sure he's on some antibiotics. Sometimes those can have side effects as well that may hamper your performance. Uh, but it sounds like he was uh, back at the practice facilities. I don't think he did anything today. He was limited today. He officially did practice in limited capacity today. Yeah, well, I mean, he might not have done too much in preparation and stuff and maybe just kind of seeing if he still had his wind in him. Uh, Because one thing for sure is that, you know, his lungs haven't fully recovered from whatever was going on, whether it be pneumonia or something else. And, you know, that could affect his ability to perform at a high level on game day, given that he's only going to have a few days to recover. So, um, you know, uh, will he play? It sounds like he's going to. Uh, I don't think that this will keep him out unless he's having some really severe symptoms still um, that are manifesting physically. Um, but it sounds like, by all accounts, he's actually feeling much better, uh, looked pretty good, and uh, they're optimistic that there's a chance he could play. And I wouldn't um, necessarily rule that out uh, right now. That could be a true game-time decision, depending on how he kind of makes it through the rest of the week. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on it, but it does sound it went from no timeline to, well, actually, it might be back this week. So uh, it's good news from that standpoint. Good news that he's feeling better. Hopefully, it doesn't go out after three snaps again because nobody else can handle that again with the big zero uh, that we got last week from him. So, if, but if you have Debo Samuel, they need him. I mean, Brian Ayuk is out. They are backs against the wall, three and four. They got a bye week next week. They need to make sure they have this win against Dallas if they want to keep their season alive. So, I think we're going to see him, and it's Dallas. If you got Debo Samuel, you got to play him. If Dallas is too good a matchup to not play Debo against right now. Their defense can't stop anything. Okay, so let's switch gears and go over to the Bucks side. All right, so we got let, – let's kick it off with Mike Evans because this is stupid. This was stupid on the organization's part because it was clear that Mike Evans should not have been out there on the field to begin with. He was limping the second he took the field. I don't know why they even had him out there. And sure enough, he injures himself worse. So what do you got on his hamstring? Yeah, I mean, Mike Evans has been around a while. He's not a rookie in this league by any stretch of the imagination here. So this is going to take a while for him to bounce back from. They're even saying already in a lot of the reports I read today uh, that they're probably not going to rush him back until after their week 11 bye. And you know what? That's actually not a bad idea uh, because his, his hamstring injury and a player his age at this position can take quite a while to heal and rushing back too soon, as we've talked about before, is very costly. Sometimes that can have a high re-injury rate. So uh, waiting for that week 11 bye will give him about a four-week time frame. So that's that's a great amount of time to really make sure he's fully recovered before they throw him back out there. And I think that's a wise decision if that's, in fact, what they do. Yeah. Uh, so it, they didn't want to put him on IR because you have to miss four games. And in their case, they're saying that you've probably only missed four weeks. So I guess the good news from the sense of he might be back week 12. For, for Mike Evans, which will be which will be huge. But you will be without him for several weeks. And then Chris Godwin, this was ugly. Oh, man. It was just, his ankle didn't move the second he hit, got hit. Yeah, it, it was ugly. Yeah, it was facing the wrong direction, as one can obviously see with him lying on the field. Um, so uh, obvious ankle dislocation, likely multiple fractures in and around the ankle that led to that. So uh, most definitely going to require surgery if he hasn't already had it. And um, it, more than likely, he'll miss the remainder of this season. It's not going to be an easy recovery. It's going to require a lot of therapy and, and treatment sessions uh, moving forward. And to try and rush back at this juncture of the season from an injury like that, unless they go really deep into the playoffs, is not very uh, likely. Yeah, it was just rough timing. I mean, Chris Scott was on his contract year, looking for a big bag. He was having one of the best receiver years in all of the NFL to this point so far, put him back in the slot and producing really well, and then pff, just goes down. This hurt me in quite a few leagues myself too, guys. So what do we have in the aftermath of all this? Well, we have Jalen McMillan, who led the team of targets. And I like Jalen McMillan. I like him coming out of Washington. I think there's some, th some things that he does really, really well. I don't think this is a guy who can step in and be a number one focus of the defense and still produce. And that, that's that's the issue. He's kind of limited as far as his route tree is still concerned. He had been out there on the field quite a bit with Evans and Godwin. Now, of course, you're not going to get too many targets when Evans and Godwin are on the field. But he wasn't able to do much with his opportunities, even in the game against the Ravens, when Evans went out and he was playing more and getting targeted more. Uh, I like him as a flyer. DFS play more. But you pick him up. I'm not starting him just yet. We need to see how this thing goes i would not be surprised and i'm not playing this player this week either but i don't mind picking him up especially in ppr formats i would not be surprised if sterling shepherd found a way to be the number one target go figure sterling shepherd we're still talking about him somehow but he's the one who's going to play the slot most likely it wouldn't be mcmillan it would be sterling shepherd who would play the godwin role and that would be more targeted okay so i think there's a reason to take a shot on both of them i think the real winner in all of this is kate Otten. Because Kate Otten's going to be the red zone target. The biggest thing that Baker Mayfield needs a big body person to throw the ball to when they get down inside the end zone. He's not going to have Mike Evans. That person will be Kate Otten, who I have as a top eight tight end until Mike Evans returns. So that's the big one that you want to go ahead and grab if he's still available to you. Uh, the 49ers, I didn't mention it. I should have put this guy in there. I forgot. I totally forgot to. But I, Brian, I've been keeping up with, with John Jennings. He had the hip issue. He hasn't practiced in like two weeks. 
Yeah, uh, I really haven't uh, been keeping up with what's going on with him, but the fact that he wasn't even seen at practice today is yeah. concerning. While Meanwhile, you have a guy like Debo coming back from pneumonia was at least out there running around with the injured players. Jawan Jennings was nowhere to be found, so <laughs> that's not a good sign. Sounds like it might be more serious than even they thought, or perhaps he's getting worked up um, with some other types of tests to figure out exactly what the problem is. But it sounds like it was related to some type of hit. Um, so whether or not the... It was just some like like a deep bone bruise, like a hip pointer or something like that, or something to the joint itself that caused an injury. Uh, hard to say right now. We don't really have a, enough information. Yeah, we'll have to get into that. So Juwan Jennings was actually the big waiver pickup, and I don't think you're going to have him to play this week. I think people are hoping he would be back. Maybe they're deciding to hold him out till after the bye. We'll have to see. But with Debo back, probably no Juwan Jennings. Definitely no Brandon Ayuk. Ricky Pierce was a pick up and stash. You're not playing him this week. We he just got back after the first week of being shot. Absolutely incredible story. And then wound up playing the most snaps of all the wide receivers because of all the injuries that happened was insane. That wasn't supposed to happen that way. But he would come in and play that power slot, Juwan Jennings type role. Chris Connolly probably played the outside. So I'm picking up Pierce on him, stashing him to see how things go on Sunday night. He's not going to be in my lineups, unless you're in some some skank deep leagues. Okay, so DK Metcalf, he had a knee issue. What do you got on him? So they're reporting it as a grade one MCL sprain, which you know is best case scenario. Uh, that usually is a literally a week to week thing. Um, at most, maybe one to two weeks. We probably will see him take this week off, is my guess, as he missed practice yesterday. Apparently. He was not planning on practicing today by most reports, and they're saying he's week to week. Um, I think, I honestly think he'd be best served just taking the rest of this week off and just gearing up toward next weekend, which if it's grade, true grade one, then that's actually a po very strong possibility. All right, so he really won't miss that much time, which is good to hear whenever it's a knee issue coming with DK Metcalf. Tyler Lockett's the biggest beneficiary. He's the one who's going to get those outside deep zone targets that Seattle likes to run. I don't think this does anything for JSN's value. Uh, for, like, even the extra target share, I really don't think this does much for him. JSN's been getting targeted like crazy. Really hasn't produced. I'm not that impressed with the guy. And his role doesn't change because DK Metcalf is out of the lineup either. So Tyler Lockett, the big winner here for me. Make sure you pick him up if you have the opportunity to do so. Wide receiver three at the very least. Deontay Johnson, ankle, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with him. Um, I didn't really see much in the way of reporting about an ankle issue, although I did find a few reports today that mentioned that he was being, and I use this in quotes, rested for some type of rib injury that he'd been dealing with for the last few weeks, um, but was able to play through it. So I see no change in that scenario heading into this weekend. If that's truly what he's dealing with, it sounds like that's just been part of the plan all along is to just kind of help, help him get by until the weekend. So uh, I'm not sure if there's really much to read into this. Um, I, I didn't see anything about an ankle injury, however. Yeah, he's been, he was dealing with an ankle last week, too. It, it's something that I don't know if it's actually happening or if Deontay's like, I need an excuse to shut it down if, <laughs> if this thing gets, gets too bad here. We're going to put it past uh, some of these guys, that's for sure. Yeah, Deontay definitely somebody whose name has come up for the trade deadline, which is going to be next Tuesday. And, you know, if Carolina's in the situation they're in, I don't know why they would pay him. And if you're not going to pay him, I don't know why they would keep him. So let's Deontay might be somebody who's actually legitimately on the move. We'll keep an eye on that. Zay Flowers. Now, we did see him pick up this ankle injury in the Monday night game, but he came back and played, but he hasn't really practiced since. Correct. And that part, part of that is probably due to the shortened week because they played on Monday night. They really just had a walkthrough yesterday. Uh, he, my guess is that he was at least limited today. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the uh, recent reports um, this afternoon. But No, he didn't uh, practice today either. Oh, he did not. Okay. No. Yeah, so... Um, uh, that means that, you know, he might not have enough time to make a, a good turnaround here. He may have developed some swelling, you know, after the game uh, was able to tough it out. And that's very common with ankle injuries. You can sometimes sprain it pretty bad, but you're able to play through it because the swelling doesn't kind of settle in for uh, 24 to 48 hours or so. And, you know, you do everything you can to prevent that, but sometimes you just can't. And that's likely the scenario here is that Monday, Tuesday, he may have developed some swelling, which may have hindered his ability to practice the last two days. And if that's the case, he might not be ready to go uh, this weekend, given the short turnaround. So we'll have to um, see if he does anything tomorrow at all. Uh, but if he doesn't, then um, the likelihood is that he'll be out this weekend. 
Yeah, so that's, that'll be interesting. I think this affects the tight end grouping with Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews more than it does for Rashad Bateman. Bateman's going to run his role. He's the X receiver. You just want to take the deep shots too. I know he's been rolling the last couple of weeks. You can maybe take an extra shot because maybe just a couple extra targets go his way. But this is a run first team and that middle of the field operation that's more likely going to take over by likely or Mark Andrews who's been playing a little bit more as of late. So look at the tight ends. But uh, Rashad Bateman doesn't really boost the value for me. Dallas Goddard, he's still dealing with that hamstring and I don't think anything's much really changed on that front. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, he missed practice yesterday. Um, I'm not sure if he got in there today. I'm not, I'm not sure if that mattered anyway. Uh, I think this is probably going to be uh, an extended kind of absence. We've already uh, talked about him, I think, last week, and I had predicted that it's going to be at least several weeks, so we'll have to see if anything changes uh, tomorrow or uh, early next week, but it's not looking good. <laughs> Yeah, not looking good at all. So another week of Grant Calcutta, or should I say, nobody. Okay, so Taysom Hill, he dealing with the ribs. It sounds like he's finally starting to progress in the right direction. Yeah, so now uh, in comparison to Jaden Daniels, Taysom Hill actually fractured multiple ribs and has been missing uh, several practices and then was limited in like the last four practices dating back to last week. So it sounds like he's slowly working his way back. Um, the problem is for the Saints – is that his replacement, Juwan Johnson, was also limited in practice because of some type of shoulder issue. So that could see Hill maybe ramp up his practice sessions and try to get back a little quicker. Uh, so that's something to certainly watch as we head into the weekend, whether or not uh, Johnson's back um, on the sideline today or tomorrow, and then whether Hill uh, ramps it up. So um, not a good situation for the Saints there as they're dealing with two guys that are injured, actually. Yeah, and look... <laughs> especially the offensive line being banged up. They need Taysom Hill because he does a lot for the blocking game that you guys don't seem to realize either. He's just a total utility player. And still, if he's out there, I don't mind, especially with the way the tight end position is, I don't mind taking shots on a guy who might get a couple of touchdowns in a game because he's going to give him red zone carries. So Taysom Hill still on my radar if he, in fact, can go. Last but certainly not least, George Kittle apparently came away with that game with a foot sprain. Don't know when it happened. Yeah, they're not really saying when, but I mean, he was in the game till the very end, even in garbage time. So at least that's encouraging to hear that it wasn't significant enough that they thought he shouldn't be out there when they had no chance. So um, he's listed as day to day. Uh, he was one of four players on the team that did sit out practice yesterday. That's probably more of a precautionary move on their on their their case. He was limited a, today. Yeah, and that's not a big deal either. Uh, you know, he's a veteran. Um, no sense in rushing him back too quick. If if he was able to play through it and he's probably just having some mild symptoms, I think we'll still see him this week. Um, it doesn't sound like it was anything serious. Big spot. George Kittle's been the number one tight end because of all the touchdowns he's been getting, and he's got a great opportunity against Dallas. Remember last year, he had three touchdowns against Dallas, so we definitely want George Kittle out there and good to go. Well, with all that, Brian, thanks for coming on for another fantastic Thursday. What do you want people to check out, and where can they find the Injured List podcast? Ah, you can find me mostly on X at Injured List Pod. You can find me on my website, theinjuredlist.com, our blog, Inside the Medical Tent, and, of course, at That Sports Podcast Network, where I do multiple shows with the rest of the gang, doing injury updates throughout the week, including tomorrow night with TSS Fantasy and Sunday morning, or last-minute roundup with TSS Fantasy early in the morning on Sunday as well. So. So you guys go ahead and check that out. Operation Domination is available to you on every single podcast app. Find us on YouTube at the Fantasy Football Advice Network channel. We go live every Wednesday at 930 and then on social media at 8 p.m. on Thursdays. And we make sure this episode gets out there, too. So, guys, good luck this weekend. I hope your players actually stay healthy for a change. <laughs> Hey there, I want to thank you for watching Operation Domination today. And if you're enjoying the show, there are some ways you can help support us. You can go to podchaser.com slash Operation Domination and leave us a five-star review. And you can do this on any podcast platform or on our YouTube page when you go to at FF Advice Network. This completely helps out the show, be able to grow, and also leave us comments to let us know how we can curtail the show to you because you are the most important member of the show. So again, go to podchaser.com slash Operation Domination to leave a five-star review and leave a comment wherever you listen or watch the show, and we'll help better serve you.